Hey guys, so today I am going to show you how I make keychains in Tinkercad. You can also use this technique to make nameplates or anything using letters. Here are some of the ones I have already made. You can technically use the text inside Tinkercad, but I don't like doing that for reasons I will show you once we get to that point. But yeah, feel free to play around with the text tool if you are new to Tinkercad. I will be showing how to import a SVG for our text. This gives a few extra options we don't get when using the text tool built into Tinkercad. I am using Kittle for this example, but you could use any type of text editing program. You can use the free version of Kittle for this, so no worries there. So, let's go ahead and jump over to Kittle and get started. Just start a new project. Canvas size does not really matter here. We will scale in Tinkercad later. Mine is a little big. It is what I already had open but like I said, does not matter much. But if you want to get close here, 150 by 50 millimeters would work. Next, you can look through the different fonts and find something you like. I find that fonts with bigger or thicker letters seems to work best, but you can play around and find what works best for you. After looking through the different fonts and a lot of indecisiveness, I finally decided to use Baby World for mine. Feel free to pick and try whatever font you want some work better than others. After you decide on your font, and the name you want to use for your keychain. We will then download it as a PNG and head over to Convertio.co where we will convert it into an SVG. If you have a paid version of Kittle, you can download as an SVG here. I like Convertio better for this though. Click on Choose File here in red and upload the PNG we just downloaded from Kittle. Then click on the drop-down menu next to where it says 2. In the image section, look for SVG. You may have to scroll down to find it. Mine pops right up because I always use it. Then you want to hit convert and wait for it to finish. Then we will download the SVG and import it into Tinkercad. So, once you have new project opened in Tinkercad, in the top right corner you will see import. Once you click on that, we'll choose file and select the SVG we just downloaded. Mine, because of the larger canvas size, was a bit big so I scaled it down some. This can sometimes take a bit, but after a while your file should import like ours did here. I am going to scale this up a bit so we can see it a bit better. We will be using this fill mode to get the look we are going for. This was the reason for not using the built text in Tinkercad. When using it you won't get this fill mode option. Next, we are going to duplicate this text by clicking duplicate up here or you can use Control D. Then without clicking off the text click on fill mode and choose outer line. We will also switch corner to round and up the quality. Sorry, I moved the height. We want the quality all the way up. We will adjust the outer line height to 5 millimeters. We will click on the letters and change those to 10 millimeters and also adjust the quality all the way up. You can adjust the line width to get different results. I ended up going with 6 here. Next, let's select both objects and group them together. Then change the width to 40 millimeters mine already is, so I will leave it. Let's also change the length to 108 millimeters. Now I am just playing with the colors a bit. If you want this to show up as multicolor, we will have to ungroup, then select the color for each part, then regroup. They will show up as one color, so once you regroup, click back on the color, 
and at the bottom left you will see multicolor click on that and both colors should show up. Next we will add a torus. We will keep it as 5 millimeters tall on the Z axis and we will change the X and Y to 8 millimeters. Normally I would use the Align tool at the top, or click L to use it and align the torus and letters up, but in this case it works better in this crevice. Next we will just group everything together and then we can export as a STL. Then, I will show you how to print this in multicolor even if you don't have a multicolor printer. If you do have a multicolor printer, you can use this same method or paint in the letters. I find you waste less filament and purges doing it this way. I am using any cubic neck slicer since I will print this on my Cobra 3. This process would be the same if you use Bamboo, Orca, or Prusa slicer. I will also go over how to do it in Cura but slice the file, then find the layer that the letters start on right-click, and choose Change Filament, or Add Pause. Then you would swap out filament once your printer pauses and continue the print. I did notice a mistake I made. I did the filament change on layer 25, it should have been 26, because at 25 the top part of the bottom section would be yellow. Next, let's jump into Cura. I'll show you how to do a pause at layer height to make the filament swap. We will be adding new script here. I will go over more on that here in just a bit. Next, we will slice the file to see on what layer we need to pause at. Just like in the previous slicer, we will want to add the pause on layer 26. Next in the top left, let's click on Extension, Post Processing, and then G-Code. I have already added a pause at Height Script. You can do so by clicking on Add Script button. Then we want to change the layer to 26. You want to have Park Print checked. I set Y and X to Park at 0 or Home. Check Standby Temp at Set That for 200 if you're using PLA. Then in G-Code before Print, add M300. This will cause the printer to beep when it pauses. G code after we will add G4S60. This will restart the print after 60 seconds. That's what the S60 stands for. If you need more time, you can always change to a higher number. Here is our finished print. Thanks for watching, guys. If I have helped in any way, please consider liking and subscribing.